So this video, this one's been a lot of work. There've been a lot of trials and errors. There's been a lot of consumption of not very edible food. But I knew if we could get this one right, it was gonna be a hit. And we finally got it. And you'll find out what it is right after this. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews and we do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is TwoCrazyKetos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to I'm gonna it. I'm going to need some coffee for this one. I'm right here with you, sir. First of all, we are filming this video at 8 o'clock in the morning, so we're going to be eating. Are you ready for this? Yes. Corn dog stufflers for breakfast. I am so excited about it, though, because we finally got it right. Well, you finally got it right. This one has had a lot of trials yes. and a lot of errors and a lot of, ew, that's disgusting, but we can't throw out the food. I think I've said, I love you, but no. Right, a lot. A lot. Uh, so today we're going to make a corn dog stuffler. Uh, now, you can use this batter in a regular waffle maker. Sure. Um, we've modified somebody else's batter a little bit. Yeah. And so uh, I do want to give credit to the basis of the corn dog batter for the stuffler is coming from Nisha's cornbread recipe. I'm going to leave a link for that video right up here. We love Nisha. It is an amazing cornbread. And what we've done is I've taken her recipe I've modified it a little bit, mm -hmm. and I've added a couple of things to make it a southern cornbread. Right, right, because we, we like it just, like, amped up a little bit on the sweetness. Yeah. And then, you know, you also have to make it a little bit different consistency. Because we got to use it in the stuff. Yeah. Like. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so we're going to, people complain all the time, like, hey, you made me buy another appliance. We've got two of them now. Yeah, whatever whatever we like ask somebody else to buy, we're usually buying two or more. Well, of we, those we we gotta have them going all the time. And honestly, here's the thing with the stuffler. I'm tired of making Rachel Stuffler and now I gotta wait 15 more minutes and I get the leftovers of the bag. Right. So now we can do it at the same time. We can do two of them at the same time. So we're gonna make two of them. And then I have not done this before. I've tried it the way we put the hot dog inside a lot of different ways. We're going to have Rachel decide for you okay. which way is the best way to place the hot dog inside of the stuffler. Right. But first, let's go over all the ingredients. There are a decent amount of ingredients. And I'm going to ask you now, please don't message me down below and say, can I sub this? I've worked with Nisha's recipe for the last almost month. Yeah. I tried changing things. Other than the additions that I made, nothing else worked. I'm going to tell you, I tried to not use any almond flour and only use pork rinds. Didn't work. So you, you kind of need, at least with the basis of this, uh, you need these ingredients. Right. Are you ready? Yes. So we need some sour cream. We need some pork rinds. Okay, ground up pork rinds. We're going to use pork and good. There's a link down below in the description along with a coupon code to get some money off of that. Do you recommend unseasoned in this recipe? Depends on what you want your corn dog to taste like. Okay. You, know, you can use the Cajun flavor and have a spicy corn dog. Uh, unseasoned and the original is pretty much what I've been playing with, but I would say you can use any flavor. Just understand your corn dog may have that little bit of a flavor. Right. We need some cream cheese some butter, baking powder, coconut flour, and almond flour. We need some eggs. Thank you, ladies. And then 
this is one of the things that's going to change. So one change from Nisha's recipe was the sour cream. Next, uh, this is kind of optional. It will work without it, and it works without it well. But if you really want a cornbread taste right. that will fool a lot of people, and that is get some cornbread extract. This is the one from OOO Flavors, and adding this, oh my gosh, it it tastes like cornbread. It ups the flavor. It wasn't just the texture of cornbread. It's the taste of cornbread. Right. And then when I say southern, we want it sweet. Right. Okay. Listen, we're southern. We want everything sweet. It's like, <laughs> can we have a little bit of tea with our sugar? Right. You know? Exactly. You're, if you have tea, you should be able to put a knife in it and it stand up straight. Right. So uh, we're going to put a few drops of liquid stevia or a couple of drops of liquid sucralose. That's just going to add a little bit of sweetness. And this is going to make it have a taste almost like cornbread pudding. Right. If you've ever made that like jiffy cornbread pudding for any like potluck. That's the taste you're going to get. That's what this. I think when I taste it. Okay. Let's put all this away and uh, get started. So here's what we're going to do. In a bowl, first thing you're going to do is you're going to take two ounces of cream cheese and two tablespoons of butter. And these need to be at room temperature. You need to have them soften. And you're going to use a whisk. You can also use an egg beater. And we're just going to kind of blend them up until they're creamy. If you've had it at room temperature, it should happen pretty quickly. Okay, so once you get all that mix, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add three eggs. And you are going to whisk this until everything is well incorporated and it's nice and creamy. You shouldn't see any chunks of cream cheese. And again, you can also use a hand mixer egg beater. Okay, we're going to call that good enough. <laughs> we also didn't have our uh, cream cheese quite up to room temperature. Perfectly at room temperature. We decided to do this about an hour ago. Right. Okay, now what we're going to do is, in another bowl, we're going to add in some of our dry ingredients. So we've got... A quarter of a cup of pork rinds. Don't miss those. Two tablespoons of uh, almond flour. One tablespoon of coconut flour. And then we've got two teaspoons of baking powder. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and use a fork and just combine that really, really well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring over our egg and cheese and butter mixture. And we're going to go ahead and push that in there. And then we're going to use a rubber spatula. And we're going to combine this really, really, really well. Okay, that's good. So now that we have everything mixed, what we're going to do is we got the last three ingredients. We're going to add in an entire dropper full of this OOO cornbread uh, seed flavoring. And then just a few drops of liquid stevia. I'd say probably about 10 drops. If you wanna use liquid sucralose, like four drops. And then we're gonna add in, while you're mixing that all together, two tablespoons of sour cream. Okay, that looks pretty good there. Okay, so at this point, now what you want to do is you want to just taste it. And don't worry about the raw eggs. You're not going to get sick. We're just going to take a little taste, and we want to see, do we need to add more flavoring or more sweetness? And that's perfect. Wow. It's like a flavor and a, a sweetness of cream corn. It, and cream corn. It really does taste like that. So, okay. Now that we've got this ready, you want to go ahead and preheat your stuffler or stufflers. <laughs> Uh, one thing I do want to let you know, coconut flour. Coconut flour absorbs water and a lot of it. That's why you use a lot less coconut flour than almond flour in recipes. It's also why it's not really interchangeable. Like you can't look at a recipe and go, oh, half a cup of almond flour. I don't have almond flour. I'm going to use coconut flour. <laughs> it won't work. Right. Okay. You use a lot less and you'll see that in a lot of our different recipes. So what you want to do is have a little bit of water. This is way too much, but just have some off to the side. And if as you're waiting for your stuffler machine to uh, preheat 
or if you're only doing one at a time, if this thickens up, just add a little bit of water, like a, a teaspoon, two teaspoons at a time to get it to thin out a little bit. Uh, this is probably even a little bit thinner than I want it, but as we sit here for a second, it's gonna get thicker and thicker, and then we can go ahead and put it into the machine. Uh, also, this recipe makes two stufflers. Now, you pretty much can just cut everything in half. If you just wanna make one. But I don't know how to make anything for one. I mean, I'm like Chris Bear. He only knows how to feed an army. Right, right. He doesn't right. Know how to feed one person. <laughs> yeah. So all of our stuffler recipes for the batter make two stufflers because there's two of us. Yeah. So you can go ahead and just cut it in half. The only problem becomes the eggs because you're using three eggs and uh, you know, you can't cut an egg in half. No, but I would recommend make two. And freeze it. And then freeze one. Yep. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this off to the side and grab our stufflers. Okay, got our first one here. What we're gonna do is go ahead and pour a little bit of batter in there. I always pour too much, so I'm gonna let you pour the batter. Okay, you wanna come up to just above that middle, like, bar piece. And if you do this right, like I said, you're gonna have enough batter to do two. Two stufflers. Now this one doesn't quite rise up as much as some of our other ones, but it does a pretty good job. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try two different ways. Yes, I wanna do it where you have like a whole one and a sliced one. Yeah. Cause we've tried it like chopped up. It, it's, it just doesn't stay together when you go to eat it. A hot dog is not a blueberry, we've so learned. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one, we're gonna slice it in half and we're using these sausages. Teton. Or Teton. Teton. Right? We, we've been corrected. Teton. Teton. Okay? So we're using those. So we're going to put one and a half per stuffler. You can, we, for the most part, have been only doing one, but I want a lot of hot, like, dog. hot dog in there. Me too. So what we're going to do is we're just going to try to make it so that literally every bite is a hot dog. Has a hot dog. I used to always get mad when you felt like you had too much bread for the hot dog, right? Like that you would have just a big mouthful of the bread and not the hot dog. So right. I want hot dog in every bite. So I found that at least with these, one and a half is enough or just the perfect amount. And there's a little tiny end piece because I wanted it to fit right. Those things are so good. Very beefy. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to cover it up. Right up to the top ridge. Go ahead and close it up. Hold it tight and flip it. Okay, now one thing I have found with this one is it doesn't seem to rise as much. Um, so we're gonna go, it takes a little bit longer to cook this one. We're gonna go for 11 minutes and then come back and check it. And sometimes what I've found is I need to flip it back over and let it just crisp up for another minute because sometimes it doesn't like poof up as much. While that one's going, we're gonna go ahead and get the other one going. So same thing, put our batter in. Covering up the little cross section. And now with this one, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do- The whole chunk. The whole hot dog. The only problem is, is you're going to have some... You are going to have some on the, like, areas that don't have hot dog in it. Close that one up. We're ready to go. And we'll be back in 11 minutes. Okay, so we have about two minutes left on our timer. We're going to go ahead and check the crispiness on each side. So we still have it flipped over. We're gonna go ahead and just lift that up and see what does that look like. Ooh. And then we're gonna go check the other side as well. And yeah, see how this side is brown more? So what we're gonna do is for the last two minutes, we're gonna leave it flipped this way to basically kind of brown up the other side a little bit more. Because again, this one doesn't rise as much as some of our other waffle batters. Okay, moment of truth. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes, I am. Here we go. Dun, da, da, da. That Look looks that. good. 
Nice and golden. Now, this one is actually higher than this one. This one probably needed a little bit more batter. What happened is this one has the thicker hot dogs. Yes. So you don't need as much batter with this one. Let's go ahead and uh, check the other side. And there you go. Looking good. Okay. We're going to go ahead and pull these out. I never do that right. I, me neither. Okay. Partially because, now this one worked well. Partially because we put a lot of stuff inside of it. Right. We're putting a bunch of heavy things inside of it. We're going to push these off to the side. <laughs> Go ahead and turn that off. We've packed it like luggage. Okay. So here's what we got. So purple dish is the whole hot dog. And the red dish is going to be sliced. the sliced hot dog. Okay. So let's go ahead and just cut it. This is just fun food for a kiddo too, right? I mean, making a corn dog is so fun. Our okay. kids love corn dogs. Let's start off with this one. So this is the sliced hot dog, okay? And you can see like every single bite is pretty much going to have hot, hot dog, dog in it. it. Want to dink it? Dink. Hot. Mmm. They're good. Mm hmm. It's hot. It is hot. That but, is really good, though. But that batter is so delicious. It's perfect. It's perfectly cooked. Um, I really like that one. I like the flavor. You're getting a hot dog in every bite, but I almost, now in the past, we've always done one hot dog instead of one and a half hot dogs. So every bite had hot dog, but then you did get a decent amount of batter. And I feel like doing it this way, I'm not tasting the batter as much. Like I'd like a little bit more batter to my hot dog. What so, about you? So you would have one hot dog and then more of the batter. I like more meat. That's just me. Like I like, just like we said when we were first, you know, pouring it, I didn't like having leftover bread mm -hmm. with not hot dog in it. So I'm more inclined to add more. Person. I'm more inclined to have more hot dog, but you'll probably enjoy it more this way because you have more empty spaces where it's just batter filling it. Now, here's the real problem with this one. Because of the way we did it, now you can see I've got hot dog. I've got a big amount of batter here with no hot dog. And then over here, you've got two. But then over here, you've only got one. Right. So it's not divided up as much. Perfectly the even. The other way to do it is take your hot dog and slice it in big chunks and turn it on the side. But I didn't like that as much. I didn't like it as much. So... Let's go give you one with more batter. Well, we're going to we're going to go the same. Okay. Okay. So we'll do it with two. Dink it? Dink. I'm going to eat this way cuz I want more batter. <laughs> that way you can get a ton more batter if that's something that you enjoy. Again, you can always put less hot dog in it. That's no problem at all. One thing we've talked about with the Stuffler with our recipes is we're focusing more on the batters than the inside because you can put whatever you want inside. Right. So now you've got the cornbread batter that works well in the Stuffler and you can figure out how you want to put the hot dogs inside or you can put something else inside or you can add cheese or you can put ground beef or whatever you want inside of it. So... For this, this part was more of a test for us. What I'm going to tell you is for me, I'm going back to slicing it. I don't like it this way. Really? I, I like it sliced because I'm not getting enough hot dog. So like that one, I was getting too much hot dog because we did one and a half. But this way, I'm not getting enough hot dog because there's big giant areas. Now I feel like I'm getting a big piece of hot dog and then all I'm left with was batter. You're so critical. I'm, I'm critical of myself though. At, at least it's a good way that way. <laughs> I like it either way. Okay. So one thing I did want to mention before we close this out, uh, and that is sour cream. You can sub our uh, yogurt with it. 
So if you don't have sour cream, if you have yogurt, yeah. using our yogurt, I'll leave a recipe link for it up here, uh, that will work instead of sour cream. So you can use it interchangeably. So the link for this recipe is going to be down below in the description, along with all of the macros for it. Uh, now, one thing on the macros, as we always say, the macros that are listed in that recipe card are for how we make it and the exact ingredients and brand of ingredients that we use. So, right. for example, we're using Anthony's coconut flour. Uh, also, that recipe down below with the macros, that is for the batter. That does not include your hot dogs. Right. So, the hot dogs, it could vary widely. If you're using Sabret hot dogs... It's going to be very different than if you're using a Costco hot dog or exactly. if you're using a Teton hot dog. So it really is going to come down to that. But the, the macros are for the batter for an entire stuffler. So uh, if you only only going to eat half of it, which we're never only going to eat half of it, uh, <laughs> then you would obviously cut the macros in half. Let us know down in the comments section if you make this. Also... Uh, let us know what other type of batters are you looking for. Do you want sweet batters? Do you want something made with something else? Uh, let us know down in the comment section. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video that I'm going to put right over there. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.